Hey y'all, we're going to uh, do uh, panning 101 and hitters 101 here. What I'm doing here is I'm getting my measurement of the span of my joist that we're going to be utilizing as a piece of return air duct. That's what we're doing when we do panning. We determined we had a 16 and a half inch span. So what we're going to do is we're going to lock in our tape, our, our tape right there, Craftsman, lock it in at uh, 16 and a half. Now we're going to uh, take our Sharpie out and we're going to uh, utilize the tape and the sharpie putting the tape up to the sheet metal and just dragging it uh, pretty gently down it and uh, bringing our sharpie with it and this ensures that we get a good straight line for our first piece of panning well usually you know you don't know who's cut on that panning a lot of times when you're out in the field before you so um, I'll usually go back and I'll double check, make sure I've got, uh, you know, got the uh, proper ma uh, proper uh, measurement there. And a lot of times too, man, your uh, your uh, tape measure will slip on you too, so you just want to ensure you got the proper measurement. So here we go. We're going to take the shears and we're going to go on and make our initial cut, and uh, we're running it right down it. I like to take the uh, the sharpie line with me, the black line. If you leave the black line, you're leaving roughly about a quarter of an inch on there which could kind of mess up your measurement a little bit all right sorry just checking this out a little nervous what we're doing there okay there's our first piece of panning all right let's uh let's hang her up here in the joist space now like i said that joist space is space is going to act like it's a uh, return air duct so when i was first trained to do this when i first got into the business uh i used a a, a, a scratch all right there uh punch and what I would do is I would get on my ladder, position my sheet metal to where I thought it should be, and then I'd take and uh, I'd hold my head up against the sheet metal and I would drive my punch in. Now that would allow me to move my sheet metal around and get it lined up where I've got it straight going all the way down the span of my joist. And then I'd put another zip screw in right there on the right where I'm tapping at it right there. So then what I would do is basically I'd remove my punch from the other side there. And uh, go on and shoot me a zip screw in there. What we're, what we're The reason we're doing that, see I put two screws in the back back here just to you know, show you what it looked like hanging up. But you can't do that. What you have to do is let that sheet metal hang. When you let that sheet metal hang, what it does is it forces... Uh, let me get the screws out. I'll show you. Take this puppy out here. I'll go ahead and uh, put that screw in we just talked about right there. Remove my, my, my punch. And see, I'm holding that sheet metal up right there with my drill. What I would do is just exactly how I'm doing it. See, I let that come down and see how it's rolling down in front of my hand or behind my hand right there. When it rolls down like that, it, it pushes the, the side where I'm drilling at. It pushes that sheet metal up to the joist in a, in a super tight. That way you don't have no air leaks because that's what it's all about. You, you don't want any air leaks in it. And what I would do right there is I would continue the whole span. You know, sheet metal, uh, sheet metal screw in probably every six to eight inches or so all the way down it. Okay, what we're going to do now is uh, we uh, took our measurements on the span of the joist space from joist to joist, and we came up with 14 and 3 quarters. So what I'm going to do is add 2 to that. So we're going to have 16 and 3 quarters. All right, so we're going to lock it in, take the old Sharpie out, and just uh, run the tape measure down it, just taking our time, taking our time. And uh, that gives us a nice straight cut right there. Okay, so we also took the depth of the joist, and we knew the depth of the depth of the joist was seven and a half. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, add two to it also. So what we'll do is we'll uh, lock in our tape measure, and go ahead and uh, take the sharpie out, and uh, you know just bring her on down. Okay, well while we got that, might as well mark the other hitter too. So we'll just slide her on around there and. Uh, going to bring it down and we're good to go well, that's it right there we've got uh, the makings of a hitters well two hitters 
So what we'll do is we'll, we'll cut this piece off here. Let your shears do the work. Don't don't worry yourselves out. Just be careful what you're doing. Like I said, every time I cut these, I take that line. You know, that line is a quarter of an inch or so, maybe more, maybe less. Depends what kind of, you know, the hit on your Sharpie. But uh, let's take that line and I guess we'll come over here and we'll cut uh, cut the other sides out. I try not to scare Sarge too bad. <laughs> He's just down there maxing and relaxing. Okay, there's our first hitter. That's it. All right, let's go ahead and cut out our other hitter here. And I guess old boy had enough. All right, Sarge, we'll see you later, buddy. <laughs> He's a good boy. All right, y'all, we got our second hitter cut. And now we're going to uh, actually make the hitters themselves. What I do is I'll take that uh, S slide right there, and I I go in between the span of those joists where we hung our sheet metal, our panning, and I'll cut it. I use my thumb, and then we'll uh, cut it out with the bulldogs. Uh, I suggest you use bulldogs whenever you're cutting them, or you will wear out your aviation snips in a New York minute. Uh, one of the tricks is how I see how I folded that over. That way you ain't got to make another line or scribe it, and you just fold it over and lop it off, and now you got two uh, two S slides to work with. I, uh, a lot of, a lot of the fellers use scribes. I tend to lose mine, but, uh, you always got an S slide. So I use my S slides as scribes. That gives me a good, uh, one inch, uh, mark on my sheet metal. <clears throat> so what I'll do is I'll mark it out right there and then I'll go all the way around the perimeter of the, of the sheet metal. I've got buddies that are so good. They really don't even have to mark them, but I like to mark them to ensure a real tight fit. You know, it's like I said, it's all about leakage. You don't want any leakage. Of course, on everything we do now, uh, I uh, put that pookie to it, that duck sealant anyway, but uh, I don't know. I just think it makes it look cleaner if you uh, do it this way. Use this, use this method here. Okay, so there, there we go. We're good to go. See, we got all our scribes on there. Now we'll use, utilize our aviation snips, our reds, and we'll just cut out our, our, our little squares there. Square one. There's square two. All right. All right. Final piece of the puzzle here. There we go. Let's get her cut out. And we're going to utilize the, uh, the S slides again. And what we're going to do is we're going to make uh, 90 degree uh, turns on them. Uh-oh. Looks like I left a little piece on the edge of that sheet metal there. <laughs> I didn't realize it while I was folding it. Okay, there's my first uh, first bend. I like to come over to the other side and bend it again, 90. you got to be careful with these. That, that sheet metal will cut you in a New York minute. And then I like to put it down on the table or whatnot, whatever I can put it down on, and I, and I fold it. you got to have somewhat good forearms on you. <laughs> And then I'll uh, I'll fold this one in, and you'll see why here in just one second. All right, and I usually don't fold that one completely all the way over. That way, it gives it like some spring up to the uh, to the top of the joist cavity. All right. Okay, we've got our panning there, and like I said, you know, if I was out in the field, I'd have that screwed all the way up. But this is just a demonstration. And like you see the the span I got right there, the uh, it looks like maybe 10 inch span. And what you do is see how it's hanging like that. Well, see if you look like four inches back from where that last screw is, it's sort of pushed up to it. So what you do is you, like I said, you utilize that panning. And uh, if once you once you get, do it a few times, you'll get the hang of it. You know, the first time I did it, I'd have uh, gaps everywhere and everything like that. It's it's a it's a skill. It's a it's definitely artwork. So. Uh, We've got our S slide cut. We determine, you know, what what uh, size to cut in between the joists there. And now I've got uh, the first hitter we cut. I reckon we'll try both of them. See see how they fit. Uh, I always put that S slide skinny side up, and it makes for a tighter fit. Man, that one looks really good, really good, really good and tight. Not, I guess it's real tight. Let me get up here and uh, get her off there. I took brought the S slide with me. Okay, that's all right. 
Now, let me get the other one. See what kind of fit we got. Uh, let me get the S slide back up on there. Skinny side up. And let's put the hitter in. Oh man, that looks good. That's good and tight and straight. And like, see how I'm doing right there? I'm looking up at it. I want to make sure it's it's square on both sides. I mean, it's not really going to hurt anything air-wise, but, you know, it's just quality of your work. You know, when your customer sees something that's square and straight and everything, you know, they really think that, you know, you're a professional and you take time doing what you're doing. you got to be ambidextrous too, guys, you know, left hand to right hand with that drill. But basically, guys, that's Hitters 101. And I appreciate you watching, and uh, this is my first narration over a video, so uh, I hope you all liked it. Um, I reckon uh, I reckon we'll holler at you all soon. Got any questions, just holler at me. All right, y'all. Bye.